Hey everyone, we released even more functionality for our model portfolios, where you can measure sector exposure, asset exposure, credit quality, and fixed income exposure. Let me show you how it works. Model portfolios are located here on the left-hand side. Let me click into my menu here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna analyze uh, my model portfolio called Growth Global. So this is my portfolio. Let me show you what it looks like if I go to the Edit Portfolio button. I basically have a, a ETF called BND, which is the Vanguard Bond Index, Total Bond Market Index. I also have a, a fund called BNDX, which is international. VTI, which is Total Stock Market Index. VXUS, which is international index. And I have the Qs, which are US-based uh, domestic tech stocks. So my allocation here is around 60 40 um, equity and bonds but with some exposure to international and some kind of just more uh, differentiated assets than just the plain old 60 40 portfolio and what i'm going to be comparing it to is my actual 60 40 portfolio so when i i created a 60 40 portfolio here and just to show you what that looks like i have my vu which is my vanguard s p 500 i have my bnd which is just my uh, Vanguard uh, total bond fund 6040 and you could see here that right now the current weight is 6138 because of some drift this portfolio rebalances quarterly so it hasn't rebalanced yet but this is my my 6040 portfolio so going back to my uh, growth global portfolio if I go to the other portfolio I could see in my benchmark here I selected my my 6040 and so that's my benchmark that this analysis is going to be based on so heading over to the exposure exhibits, which I wanted to cover, we have all these uh, different exposure exhibits. Uh, start with the asset allocation. So this is kind of how my portfolio is allocated among different asset classes. So right here, I could see that my portfolio has a 80% exposure to equities versus the benchmark, which has a 61.5%. Remember my benchmark is the 60-40 uh, portfolio that I created. And then, uh, what this gives me is also the overweight underweight. So I could see kind of really quickly that I'm overweight equities by about 20 percentage points and I'm underweight fixed income by about 20 percentage points. You could sort these by uh, this button here. So if I wanted to sort just by the name or if I wanted to sort by my overweights, underweights, I could do it that way or I could sort by the exposure, which is how I had it originally. The other thing that you can do here is this is the main graph, and then you have this contribution graph on the right-hand side. So as I click into these different cells, this contribution table is gonna change. And what it's gonna tell me basically is how do you decompose my portfolio, my portfolio holding? So if I have in my equities an 80.3% holding, this is what's contributing to 80.3%. And if I add up these three numbers, that would equal 80.3%. And the way to read this table is uh, VTI. In my portfolio, VTI has a 40.9% weighting. The exposure to equities, which is what I clicked on, is almost 100%. And so my overall contribution is a 40.7% contribution to the portfolio. So you could click in these to, to really understand kind of what's contributing the most. This is gonna be a little bit maybe more clear in the equity sectors. So if I have my equity sectors, let me start with sector here. Um, again, these are my sectors, and I could see here that I'm um, uh, actually pretty equal weight on inf uh, with information technology. Uh, I'm slightly underweight financials. I'm overweight disc consumer discretionary, and I'm slightly overweight these other segments. So not a lot of style drift here, and probably the biggest overweight here is industrial. So let's kind of analyze that. When I click on industrials, I see that my portfolio weights are here. The exposures in the segments are here. And so um, it looks like VTI and VXUS is really giving me the most contribution from industrials, whereas QQQ has very little exposure to industrials, uh, which, which makes sense. And can do that by industry as well. So these are my biggest kind of industry weightings. If I sort this by over underweight, um, I have my semis as my biggest overweight at 1.9 percentage points. And we could kind of drill into here and see that the Qs are giving me my highest contribution to the semiconductor exposure. One thing to note here is that when you click on one of these items, for example, if I have equity sector selected, only the items that have 
equities are going to be counted towards this exposure. So my bond funds aren't here because they're not contributing any of the exposures. So that's not going to be part of this analysis. And that's the same thing. The same thing is true when we're thinking about credit exhibits uh, for my holdings that don't have any credit or fixed income. Um, on the regional side, um, also kind of interesting. So I have my uh, regional exposure. And um, as you remember from my holdings, I, ha I just have a lot more international holdings. I have that that total stock market and, and international exposure. And so right now this exhibit tells me that exactly that my benchmark, which is a US based benchmark is almost 100% US. My portfolio is 74%. So I'm underweight the US by about 22 and a half percentage points. And then I'm overweight a lot of these industries without any one industry kind of um, being tremendously or significantly overweight, but just across the board, pretty diversified across these different industries. And then I could also hone in and, and look at this on an equity basis and on a fixed income basis as well. Very similar on a country level, just seeing kind of what the country's exposures are. So kind of a subset of regions on the fixed income sectors. We have a high level fixed income view and a detailed fixed income view. So on a high level, we have these uh, really big buckets of, of government, corporate, securitized cash, munis and derivatives in my portfolio. I'm way overweight government bonds and I'm underweight cash. And if we look at it on a detailed basis, you get to kind of dig into um, more granular categories such as agency, mortgage backed bonds and the like. Jumping over to credit quality, we have the major buckets for, for credit quality here. So if I sorted by name here, um, I have my, my uh, really high grade credits over here. So the biggest exposures here are to uh, AAA and some, some triple B. Um, and I could see here that I'm a little bit uh, further out on the credit quality. So a little bit more overweight, these lower tranches. Uh, than the benchmark. And that's something that I might want to do because I have a view on credit and where we are in the credit cycle. And lastly, on the maturity profile, uh, gives you kind of my duration distribution for the different funds. So for example, here, I could see that the biggest underweight I have is in the 20 to 30 year range where uh, I'm underweight. And then looks like this portfolio is overweight. Some of the more uh, shorter term and medium term durations. So this gives you a nice breakdown of the overall exposure to duration uh, and the distribution of duration exposure in my portfolio versus the benchmark. I hope that this overview was helpful and I hope that you use Coifin to analyze model portfolios more deeply. Please reach out to us if you have any questions. Our email is help at coifin.com. Thank you so much.